that this guy is super healthy. Remember those little psoas muscles that were down here by the vertebral body? They're enormous. They're kissing his abdominal rectus. These giant, enormous, oblique muscles. He has very little visceral fat within his abdomen. And he has like, like no subcutaneous fat. So I'm going to show you a picture of this guy. He's giving me permission. He's, um, he's an Olympic athlete. See how healthy he is? Look at those muscles. He doesn't do pull-ups, he doesn't do push-ups, and he doesn't lift weights. He does one thing. And he's never lifted weights. He's a sprinter. It's a survival skill. 30,000 years ago, if you couldn't sprint, you were a dead man. You, were, you would die. You want to get healthy? We get our clients to sprint, even if you're old. I'm 56 years old, and I go out and sprint virtually every day or every other day. I'll do a short sprint. It's a really important thing. Start off slow and work your way up to it. Talk to your physician to make sure that you can safely embark on a high-intensity exercise program. But sprinting is an awesome thing, and we're designed to be able to do it even in our, in our years. I'm pretty, pretty fast for a 56-year-old guy. So this guy is a good example of what you can look like and should be looking, looking like. Now here's another example to make you a little bit more of a believer in sprinting. This is an MRI scan. This guy has visceral fat, fair amount of it. He was already high fat, low carb, ketogenic. He was doing all my interventions I recommended, getting sunshine, going for a walk, doing high intensity exercise, sleeping well, doing the sauna, doing hot and cold therapies. I do lots and lots of things to get people um, optimally healthy. So he was doing all those things. Only one thing he was doing that kind of troubled me is he was chronically running 10 miles a day, five times a week. And I told him, let's just stop that running and try sprinting. Let's see what happens. So that's all he did. And less than two months, he came back. He got jacked up. I had to put this guy up against the wall. I said, please, tell me if you're doing steroids. This guy was 58 years old. It had that much of a change on him. So high-intensity exercise, the kind of exercise that we normally would do, how you exercise has a role in it too. So it's a great biomarker to take a look at. These are legs of an NFL football player. Uh, he has a little subcutaneous fat around him. This is the Olympic sprinter, no subcutaneous fat, beautiful legs. This is a series of MRI scans that you've seen. Um, this is 68-year-old business executive who in two weeks dropped his visceral fat visibly. You don't have to go to medical school or be a radiologist to see that that is smaller and his visceral fat is smaller. He didn't exercise one minute. Between week zero and week 35, he never exercised. You see that? If we get people to understand cutting out processed foods, the carbohydrates, the difference it makes inside your body, you can see it directly, it would help people so much. So that's why I'm a big believer. And if it doesn't get measured, it doesn't get fixed. We've got to take a look at these things. You can do this without measuring things, but a lot of people fall away because they simply don't see the changes and they get discouraged. Some, many of our patients actually don't lose weight. What they're doing is they're getting rid of visceral fat but building muscle at the same time. And how do you know unless you measure that? So survival of the resilient, people willing to work hard. Sometimes if you're, you're not that resilient, you need to measure things to have that kind of encouragement. So I would lay in bed at night saying, dear God, help me figure this out for people that cannot afford to get an MRI scanner. So this is what it came up with. When I was in this particular scan, you see that red line? From here to here, it gets smaller, laying down in the sagittal plane. So what I realized is that's an exploitable measurement because my Asperger's, I figured this out. So this line is smaller than this one. And so what we can do is do this. I would take soldiers and clients I work with, lay them down and measure that distance. And over a period of time, it goes down. You can do this tonight when you go home. Get a, get a measure, a ruler or a yardstick, and track that number when you lay down. You know it's visceral fat because visceral fat stays up. You get that Mount Fuji. You lay down, you get that big belly. Subcutaneous fat, you ladies, will roll, roll down to the side. But visceral fat stays up there. If you haven't hit menopause, you get mostly subcutaneous fat. But as soon as you hit menopause, you start building visceral fat. It's called the great equalizer. You catch up to us guys that are filling with visceral fat. So consider if you can't get an MRI scanner scan, 
consider doing this measurement. And then to make it a little bit easier, because this kind of kludgy, you know, it's hard to work with, um, I developed this device <laughs> to, to measure it. And I'm giving away to charity. If anybody who's a business person in here, I will just let you develop it just so we can have something like this to give to people who can't afford to do an MRI scanner. It's patented, ready, you know, to, to go. So um, I just need to get it out there so it can help, help people out. Whoop, I really got to start flying. Okay. <laughs> So these are cerebral arteries. We started measuring the brain because clients were saying, my God, I'm getting, feel like I can process information better. My memory's improving. Is there something about getting rid of visceral fat that makes you smarter? We said, I don't know. Maybe we'll start scanning the brain and see if we can see the difference. And what we found out was these arteries, right here, do you see this, is, is, is hazy because that's an atherosclerotic cardiovascular plaque that schmutz in the pipes the arteries are getting diseased. And that's what causes people eventually to have heart attacks and strokes, but what also causes our muscles to start atrophying, all these changes. So look at this right here. Look at it. It's completely, almost completely blocked there. So it's a massive plaque, and that's very often the site of where people have their strokes or the middle cerebral artery. But look, it opened up. And do you know this time period was just 10 months? Yeah, high fat, low carb, ketogenic lifestyle, doing a lot of walking, some high intensity exercise, sunshine, all the kind of things that you know intuitively you should be doing. Now we can show you the difference it makes. This is how we're going to be able to dramatically cut down on strokes and heart attacks doing these kind of measurements. The other exciting thing I want to share with you is as researchers, we think we're going to be able to reverse something called cerebral atrophy. Do you know your brain shrinks as you age? That's why you start talking so slow. Why does that happen? My God. I don't want to be a 90-year-old guy talking so slow. I want my brain working fast and sharp because I want my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren coming and getting advice from me. I love to work with older people. And traditionally, the elderly have always been a source of wisdom for the young. But as obesity and diabetes is increasing, unfortunately decreasing is the interest in the millennials and younger people and going to, old, old to get advice from the, their grandfathers and, and grandmothers. So we're losing it. And I think it's not their fault, it's biological. It's because when they look at these disease-ridden bodies, biology tells them they don't hunt and gather well, they can't tell you anything. So if we get people more healthy, I think we reclaim this great influence on the young people that the, all the wisdom and experience that we have, but you've got to get yourselves more healthy for them to start paying attention to you. So I think we're going to find out that brains, as they get more blood flow to them, will start growing, or at least shrinking less slowly, or less quickly, or shrink lower, slower. And I think we're going to find that actually they increase. All right, a few quick pictures here. This is my leg in 2014. Big eczematous plaque, a terrible ex ex eczema. Bleeding you know, all night long and my sheets are still stained from blood stains from that eczema. And then my leg in 2016, do you see the shape has considerably changed? The eczema went away. And what's interesting in 2019, because I track all these photographs and I got Asperger's, <laughs> look how much more hair I got. Yeah, you increase blood flow and the, your hair gets more healthy. Ladies, don't you want lustrous hair again? That lush hair, and I think it's possible. Men, I think we're gonna find, I don't wanna represent this, but I'm gonna ask the question, can we start reversing thinning hair and receding hairlines? Uh, my legs were bald at the bottom from anterior lateral alopecia of my legs, and now their the hair's regrowing. Super, super exciting, blood flow. So one of the things you can see in me, if you're up close, you can see visible, visible pulses in my arms. My radial pulse, my ulnar pulse sometimes, my brachial pulse, my dorsalis PT. You should not see pulses in a 56-year-old guy. But if they've lived optimally healthy to increase blood flow, you start seeing it. More blood flow, you dramatically improve health. So it's blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. So facial analysis. The other thing that changes are faces. 
This was my face before I was high fat, low carb. Now, if you see the changes, what I found is you have a good chance of really optimally optimizing your health. If you don't see much change, not so much. I found patients that said, well, you, your hair is a little different. They don't do so well. But if you see that, run for it. That means nature is telling you, you can pick up, you've got software in your brain that says, hunter gatherer, and I track it. That is the difference. You encounter me 30,000 years ago on a pathway, you'd say, I want to join your clan, or I want you to join my clan. That's what we're about, looking for healthy people. Being influencers, being a better mom, dad, boss, whatever it is you're doing, that's what happens. These are some uh, other uh, facial pictures. Me, one of, his, one of my soldiers in three months improved his appearance. This guy in one year. Fathers and mothers, if this guy came knocking at your door and says, I want to marry your daughter, <laughs> that might be a little concerned, but look what happened to him in one year. Do you see that tremendous difference? Amazing. And this was one of my uh, army medics. Three months, look at that facial change. Yes, yeah, significant. So we wear our health on our faces. Super important. So if you get optimally healthy, you go ketogenic, your face, face starts changing. I want to data mine social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these spaces, and capture people's face, facial changes as they go ketogenic. And I think we're going to learn through artificial intelligence, machine learning, a lot of things we should be doing to become more healthy. This is a guy who went the opposite direction. Instead of going high fat, low carb, he went uh, low fat and he exercised a lot. He started running like crazy. Now he lost weight, but do you see his face actually aged? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that's what the doctors, unfortunately, in the past and still a lot of them do. They tell you, don't eat fat, you know, eat carbohydrates and just exercise. Well, it didn't work out so good for him. Now, this is Tim uh, Russer. And I think there's five years difference. But you see his facial change right before he had his fatal heart attack. See that inflammation? He basically weighed the same. But stress, lack of sleep, cortisol, poor lifestyle, uh, caused him to have a lot of disease and he had a fatal heart attack. Now, let's see what time. 245, let's see what I go to. Uh, to 2.30, so I think I got six minutes left. Six minutes? <laughs> Okay, so uh, these, are, these are some biomarkers. So I want to tell you, if you can't do an MRI, um, these are things I have learned by tracking these patients when they come in, doing all these scans, and we get rid of visceral fat. We open up these arteries. What changes on the body? Super exciting, super interesting things. So the ability to squat. There's somebody up here I saw squatting down here, super healthy guy. So I don't know where he went to. There he is, has his hand up there. If you can squat like that guy can squat, which is basically sitting like this with your heels on the ground, that's a good sign. But almost nobody can. We were raised to do this, that we should have a bowel movement, defecate. <laughs> but we lose that capability. And we don't have joints anymore because of chronic disease and degenerative joint disease. So squatting is an interesting capability you should be able to get back to as you start eating um, a ketogenic lifestyle, ketogenic diet, and adopt more of a healthier lifestyle. And then there's a, I can't do it with all, all my, my pants on and stuff, these, these pants, but it's going to sit to stand. If you can stand up and sit right down on the ground without using any body parts, count your parts, it's called the sit to stand test. I can go right down, sit on the ground, and stand right up without my hands, which is a really interesting test. I, I wish I'd, I should have worn shorts so I could have been able to do it, but I didn't think it looked very professional because it showed my hairy legs. <laughs> Another one is a, a one-legged stand. Now, usually my sympathomimetics are firing because I'm all jazzed up here talking from the group, and I'm, I'm not so able to do this. But if you can stand on one leg with your eyes closed and stand nice and still, um, not too bad. Um, the average 55-year-old, average 50-year-old can only do that five seconds. A 10-year-old, 12-year-old can stand there like a tree. So you want to you wanna try to track that. I'm telling you this because as you go ketogenic and you become more healthy, you'll stand more and more still and be able to do that. Don't do it in the middle of a talk because you're, you're all jazzed and you can't do it as, as well. But it's, it's a cool test. A limbo ring. Uh, we're going to show a picture of that, but this guy has a limbo ring. I think maybe I'll just 
Uh, jump to it real fast. Do you see that dark ring around that kid? Yeah. You know what's cool about kids? Super healthy. There are blueprints. Look at your children and your grandchildren. That's how you should look. The only reason why we look the way we do is disease has come into it. So a limbo ring, this dark ring around, these, when you see these people, um, they're attracted because of that ring. And it's a sign of health. Now what happens to other people is we lose it. And we get um, a gray ring. And I'll, I'll show that in, in just another scan. Um, but uh, a limbo ring is a sign of health. So you can track, go back, you guys are going to be looking in your mirrors tonight, your limbo rings, which is good. <laughs> but I'm interested in taking photographs and seeing if we can get that back in people. So pay attention to it. And then, whoops, time and degree of finger puckering. So see this finger puckering, fingers puckering? Little kids, they give them baths when they pull, they, their fingers pucker. The faster your fingers pucker, the healthier you are. Now, about, about a year ago, my fingers started puckering when I would go into the sauna. And I'm like, God, this is, why is that happening? Why are my fingers puckering? You know, like Asperger's questions and stuff like that. I realized blood flow is improving, and now my fingers are starting to pucker. So watch for it. Watch for it. It's a cool change that will start to happen. And then another one is um, time and degree you sweat, how fast you can quickly sweat is a reflection of how, how open your arteries are. Your capillaries, how, how open they are in the blood flows. The better, the faster you can make sweat. And the time degree you can make urination. Little kids, give them a cup of water, boom, within minutes they have to pee because they have blood flow so good to their kidneys they make urine. Doesn't happen so much to adults. But now I drink a little bit of water and I gotta pee pretty fast. And it's not just, a, you know, I drink, you know, I keep myself in a hydrated state and it's, it's a cool marker, so watch for that. I tell these to my clients, guarantee you're gonna get healthy, and this is what you're gonna watch for. These kind of changes will happen. And then time and degree um, to defecation. If you're sitting on a toilet a long time to have a bowel movement, that's a problem. You should have a fast bowel movement. I mean, don't go on it, and jump and fast and force it, but you, you wanna you know, have a nice, smooth bowel movement that doesn't take a long time to do that. And the ketogenic lifestyle is get more healthy, that's what's gonna happen. So it'd be super exciting, you'll move away from constipation to more optimized defecation. Less sunburn. I go out in the sun, I was out in Kuwait, the Middle East, 10 hours in the sun, no sunscreen. All my soldiers I'm out there with. I'm 56, they're young, they get all sunburn, they're all using sunscreen, I use no sunscreen. I'm out there 10 hours and I'm telling you, God watching me, no sunburn, not one bit. Low inflammatory state, we're meant to be able to tolerate the sun. When you have a high, when you have a, a highly inflamed body, you just sunburn super easy. Google keto comma sunburn and you'll see all these people reducing their sunburns. Noticing, it just happens. As you improve your level of health, you get low inflammation. And then less bug bites. You almost never get mosquito bites or bug bites. It's very interesting. My kids get bug bites all the time, but I just never get mosquitoes. And then improved walking. You know, if people will start walking, they walk slow. I had this 55-year-old guy, so Lieutenant Colonel, walk like this. You know, two of them. I was walking around with them out, out in the Middle East. I don't know how that guy deployed. But, you know, you want, to be able to, you want to be able to saunter. You want to have a smooth saunter. Sprinters, you know, just float across. You know, they, walk, they have a nice saunter, a nice gait. And that's what we're meant to have. You want to be able to do lots of walking because that's what we did. So how smooth you walk is important. Marathoners, you know, do lots of fast, you know, they do lots of sustained running. They don't walk with a smooth saunter. So pay attention to track stars versus runners in the Olympics or marathoners. You'll see a difference in their gait. And then um, abdominal musculature. If you've got a really soft abdomen, um, you don't have mu as much muscle tone. When you hold up your arms, you should have a nice muscle tone from perfusion, even, at, even in your 50s and 60s. And I'm just gonna challenge you and let you know that's weakening you. If the, to the extent that you make these changes, you'll start improving your, your blood flow and your health and you'll get nice muscle tone. Improve your face and your whole appearance. Everything gets better. And then time and degree of postprandial cold. What that means is got another Asperger thing that I figured out. When, when I eat food, it used to be, you know, kind of we get cold after a while. Oh my God, when I eat a meal, within minutes I'm freezing. 
freezing because the blood rushes to my gastrointestinal tract, my mesenteric uh, arterial system, and all that blood leaves my skin, and I'm freezing because I can shunt blood so fast, quickly, make changes, and that's also available to me when? If I gotta fight another guy or fight another animal. So the fight or flight syndrome, and it allows me to respond very, very quickly. Your ability to shunt blood in an emergency can save your life. And it also is a reflection of your health. So you'll notice as you do that, you'll start getting cooler and colder. Um, pick this up. This is actually, I think, my last slide. Uh, and then blushing. Blushing. If, you, if your kids blush, it's because they're healthy. They can shunt blood fast. Those of you who are fathers, and grandfathers, grandmothers, you have a child that does something, a grandchild that does something bad, and they, they blush and you're talking to them about it, you, that is a healthy child, and it also is biologically exploitable for you to have confidence that they are tracking they did something wrong. <laughs> if that child is, you know, just is white and doesn't respond, they don't even get it. So if you see that blushing, go up there and you hug them. And you say, Grandma knows that you feel bad. And Grandma loves you. So that's biology. You exploit that healthy feature. That's what's going on. That's why we have that. And now I see my adult clients starting to blush, which is super, super interesting. And then um, wound healing. You'll heal fat, wounds much faster when you're younger. You heal much slower when you're older. But interesting, when you're older, you don't get scars. Younger people get scars. Scars are actually a sign of health. If you, if you scar, you know, as a young person, um, you see these uh, uh, tribes in Africa and Amazon, they scarification, they scar their face because it's more attractive. Why? Because it means you're a, a good hunter-gatherer. You're out there doing it. You're hustling, right? So don't be so troubled about scarring. It's actually a pretty interesting sign of health. And then blood pressure. Um, Urge to avoid is kind of an interesting one. If you get a blood pressure cuff and it squeezes your arm, you feel urge to avoid, that's good. That means you detect a quick change. So it's an interesting thing we're picking up in our clients. All right, um, see these red lips? Little kids have super red lips. Why? Blood flow. See how red they are? Who wants red lips? Ladies who use red lipstick. They're trying, to, they know intuitively it makes them look more attractive. Guys, the reason they look more attractive is because they have healthier blood flow and it makes us want to merge our genetic material with their genetic material. <laughs> That's what's going on. Red lips. You don't need to use lipstick. You just need to get healthy and you'll improve your blood flow to your lips. Uh, hunter-gatherer face. So I put this in. Some of the best hunter-gatherer faces are these lean kind of faces. Soccer players of all the sports I've seen, track stars and soccer players have hunter-gatherer faces. And you know the female, uh, females, fantastic hunter-gatherer faces. So there's something about a lot of sprinting that goes on with soccer, high intensity. Um, but you want to get that hunter-gatherer face, and it will just reverse. So remember the photographs of those changes. You'll adopt uh, more hunter-gatherer. So that's really it. Um, that's the end of my talk.